I know you made that New Year's wish for more Math Counts minis, so here we go. We got y equals x squared plus 10x plus 21. We want the least possible value of y. I'll just start with the least possible value of x. That's easy. Let's put in x equals 0. 0 squared is 0, plus 0, plus 21. That gives me y equals 21. Is that? Oh, yeah, negatives. We can go lower than 0. Let's try negative 1. If I put in x equals negative 1, I get 1. Minus 10 is minus 9, plus 21. That gives me y is 12. If I put in negative 2 for x, negative 2 squared is 4. Minus 20 is minus 16, plus 21. I can get even smaller. Maybe I can always just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Ah, oh, but if I put in negative a billion for x, I'd get a huge number when I square it. Gigantic positive number. So y will end up being really, really big if I put in negative a billion. So we're not going to get, keep getting lower and lower and lower forever and ever. It's going to stop and then go back up. But yeah, where's it going to stop? And well, if we just keep trying integers, I mean, we might, we might hit that bottom point. But how will we know for sure? I mean, the answer might be a fraction. We're going to have to do something smarter. Now, if we look at this expression, x squared, x squared always has to be non-negative. It can't ever be negative. But the 10x, that, that can be negative. Oh. Now, there are other things we can have squared instead of just x. You know, maybe we can rewrite this as, as something else squared. And, well, let's imagine we started with x plus a squared. I'm just going to look at that. Go ahead and expand that. Get x plus a times x plus a. And then we use the distributive property here to expand this. We'll have x times x plus a plus a times x plus a. And then we're going to multiply both of these out with the distributive property. x times x is x squared. x times a, that's ax. And then a times x is also ax. When we add those up, we get 2ax. And a times a is a squared. So when I expand this product, the square of x plus a is just x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. Now I see how I can bundle up this 10x with the x squared. If I let a be 5, I get my x squared plus 10x. So if I start off with x plus 5 squared, I get x squared, put the 5 in here for a, is 10x, and then 5 in for a gives us 25 at the end. If x squared plus 10x plus 25. So I can go back up here and I can take this. I've got a plus 21 out here, not a plus 25, but if I take that 21 and break it up into a 25 and a minus 4, then I have x squared plus 10x plus 25 minus 4. There's my square. This is always a square. I can write that as x plus 5 squared. And I still have that minus 4 out here. This square is always non-negative. It can't ever be negative. The smallest it can be is 0. When I put in x equals negative 5, that'll be 0. And I'll get the smallest possible value of y is negative 4. All right, that's pretty slick. This looks pretty useful, this little expansion here. Let's try another problem. Oh, let's see that. X and Y again. X times Y is 9, and then we have this giant kind of scary equation. Well, we'll start with, with this. We start with the easy equation because well, it's the easy equation. Well, I can solve for Y. I can write this as Y equals 9 over X. And I can put that into this giant mess, and I'll have x squared times 9 over x plus x times 9 over x squared, yuck, plus x plus 9 over x, whew, yikes, all right, let's see if we can simplify this, x squared, one of the x's cancels here, x squared over x, that'll just give me 9x, this gives me a, a, uh, uh, this is going to take all day. Forget this. I mean, it'll work. It'll work. Try it at home. It'll eventually work because these numbers are very conveniently chosen. If 
but that doesn't give me the warm fuzzy feelings. I want to find something nicer, prettier, something that'll always work, not just if the numbers happen to come out right. Let's try to find something smarter. Oh, uh, what's smarter? Um, well, I know x times y, and when I look at this, I can factor an xy out of these first two terms. I can write this, this long equation as xy times x plus y. I'm just factoring the xy out of x squared y and xy squared. Just factored that out equals 100. Now, I know that this xy is 9, so I have 9 times x plus y plus another x plus y equals 100. So I can combine these and I say this is 10 times x plus y equals 100. And of course that means x plus y is 10. That's much simpler than the mess we were making back here. Yeah, don't even like to think about that. Now we could take this and substitute this into here and find x and y, but I see an x plus y. I see an x squared plus y squared. And I remember this. We can use this slick expansion here to finish the problem. I've got x plus y. I want x squared plus y squared. I'm going to square both sides of this equation. And I'm going to get x plus y squared equals 10 squared. Now x plus y squared, that's not just x squared plus y squared. Don't make that mistake. We've got that expansion. We did this expansion back here. We've got this middle term here. When we multiply this out, we get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And that equals 10 squared, which is 100. So now I subtract 2xy from both sides. I'm looking for x squared plus y squared. I get x squared plus y squared equals 100 minus 2xy. 2xy, I know that xy is 9, so 2 times xy is 18. 100 minus 18 is 82. Never had to figure out what x and y are. So even if x and y are some wacky, wacky numbers, I can still solve this problem just knowing the 100 and the 9. You said didn't ever have to figure out what x and y are. Pretty slick. All right, and on to our last problem. x and y again. This time we at least have a z. Now look. Before we dive into this problem, a little word to you in math counts. I know you're watching math counts. X and Y. X and Y. X and Y and a little Z thrown in. Come on. There's a whole alphabet out there. How about A, B, C? P, Q, R? All right, whole alphabet out there. Now, let's get back to our problem. We've got X plus Y and plus Z now is 7. Some of the squares is 19. Ah, oh, I could try to guess numbers that work for x, y, and z, but what we saw before, we don't always have to figure out what the variables are to solve the problem. So let's try that here. I've got x plus y plus z and the sum of the squares, and I can relate those by squaring this. If I start off with x plus y plus z squared, Let's try that. I know that that equals 49, first of all. I know that this is 49 because we're told that this sum is 7. So we square that sum, we get 49. All right, so I'm going to multiply this out, and that means I'm going to have x plus y plus z times x plus y plus z. And again, we're going to use the distributive property. We're going to have x times x plus y plus z x times x plus y plus z, and we're going to take the y times x plus y plus z. Yikes, this is starting to look a little scary. But let's hope it all works out in the end. Multiply this out, I'll have x times x, that gives me an x squared. And I'll have plus xy plus xz. Then over here, once again, I get that xy again. Then I have a y squared, and now a yz. And I multiply this out, I'll have another xz, another yz, and now z times z is z squared. Whew. 
x squared, y squared, z squared. We've got them all together. x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And I got an xy and another xy. xz and another xz, yz and another yz. I got two of each. Plus two times xy plus xz plus yz. Aha! We want the arithmetic mean of these three products, so we need to find their sum. And now we can find their sum. We know this x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We're told that that is just 19. Plus 2 times this giant sum equals 49. You see that key strategy we used here? Wishful thinking. It's one of my favorites. We didn't know this would work for sure. But we wanted to relate this x plus y plus z to the sum of the squares. And we happened to stumble on exactly what we wanted. So now I can subtract 19 from both sides. And I'll have 30 equals 2 times this product. And that tells me that xy plus xz plus yz is equal to 30 over 2. Divide by that 2. And that gives me 15. Now I want the arithmetic mean of these. I know that their sum is 15, so their arithmetic mean, their average, I divide by 3, and I get 5. Now that we're done, a quick reminder, get your real math video up, and also math counts, another reminder for you. There's a whole alphabet out there, not just X, Y, and Z. Making these math counts videos is hard work. I could use some help. I could use your help. Go grab your video camera, math counts handbook, some friends, make a math video, upload it here at realmath.org. We're going to take some of the best ones, and if yours is one of those, we're going to give you a trip to Orlando.